welcome back to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton, and welcome to a show where we'll be paying tribute to one of the finest Everton players of the 21st century. We were dealt the news yesterday, of course, that Leighton Baines has played his last game for Everton and will be retiring from football, putting the curtain down on 13 years with the club, but leaving us with a lot of great memory. I've got Thomas, Teddy and I to look back on some of those memories in this show. Teddy, I'll start with you, mate. Uh, it wasn't the way he wanted to bow out, obviously, but you know he, there, there is plenty of great memories for us to look back on with Leighton Baines. What any sort of highlight for you in his thirteen years here? I mean, the highlights just you know picked one. You know, like the, there's the free kicks at West Ham, the the free kick um, against Chelsea in the cup. The free kick. My personal favourite was that absolute thunderbolt against Newcastle away. Absolute unbelievable Locked strike. That, wasn't it? I was it's, lucky enough to actually be there. That was that was yeah. unbelievable. Oh, I, remember, I remember him lining up for it, and I was thinking he, he won't shoot from here. Like uh, it's someone else is over the ball with him. Is it is it Carsley? It was, I can't remember who it was. But it was someone Pina. else. I thought, yeah, it might have been Pinar actually. Um, someone's over the ball with him as well, and I was thinking who's going to take this? When if it's a shot, it's Baines because he's left footed, but he surely won't shoot from there. And then he does, and just oh, what a strike! And it's one of the most unassuming, underrated players in the Premier League era ever. And it, the way he's gone out is just very on brand for Baines. He's always he's always been the quiet player, hasn't he? Like, he didn't caught the limelight. Maybe the, maybe he wanted the ball while there was no fans. Yeah, didn't didn't get the recognition that his talent deserved outside of Everton. Um, and that he's, he's gone out that way, and it might have even been by design. He's, you know, he's obviously just let's be honest, the club have known ahead of time because they've had the videos made and all that, but that that's, doesn't mean that they probably weren't trying to keep him right until the end. He's felt it's the right time and he's he's gone in a way that's sad for everyone else because we haven't given the, you know, the send off, the, you know, the, the lap of honour and all that. But, you know, we'll see him again. I think, you know, we'll get a testimonial, you know, he'll, he'll be, he'll be, he'll, he'll come back to Goodison at some point, you know, what, he might even come back as a coach. And yeah, that's, I, 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 that's all, when you said see him again, that's going to set me off because I, that, I was fine until I saw someone make a video compilation with a see you again over it, which was just like, yeah, that just confounded my entire like day's worth of depression yesterday. Yeah. I mean, he, he Leighton Baines was, now it's just it seems terrible saying was because it not is, but was one of the top three um, left backs in the Premier League era. Which, when you think about the teams that have been in this league, and he hasn't won anything because he stayed at Everton when he could have gone to Bayern Munich, he could have gone to Man United. It's a travesty. It's like he, he, his talent. He is the left back, Alan Shearer. He was one of the best in the league, but his trophy haul doesn't reflect that due to his loyalty to his club and you know the, the the I personally think he's the best left back in the Premier League era I know a lot of people say Ashley Cole some say Dennis Irwin no no, no. Ashley Cole was the only one who was even close Ashley Cole in a one-off game unbelievable you know like he could take on the best wingers in in world football and, and get the better of them but I think you know Baines as an attacking fullback he's got the record for the most assists for a fullback 53 I just think he he didn't get the recognition because he didn't go for one of the one of the you know the Sky clubs. Let's be honest. If he goes to Bayern Munich, and let's remember they wanted him in 2010. David Alaba only broke through that season from the youth academy. He was Bayern Munich um, two before that. Um, so there's no you know he he could have gone there. He could have um, won trophies there if he never settled there. Or David Alaba took a spot eventually. Could have went somewhere else and you know another massive team won trophies there. It's it's criminal that he's he's finished his career and he won't get the recognition that he deserves based on the level of club he, he stayed at. And I think the club over his 13-year career, I always said, if, if we've got a Champions League level player like Lukaku, uh, but we can't provide them Champions League football, we've got no right to expect them to stay after a certain amount of time. Leighton Baines booked that. He stayed with the club and he's still, I think one of the top group of fullbacks in the league now at 35. If you look at the left-backs throughout the league, the 20 starting left-backs, he's probably in the top six of them because I he might not have the legs um, over a full season, but ability-wise, I still think he's quality. 
and his last goal for for Everton. It's just a shame, you know, we lost the penalty shootout. But I think people knew when he scored that goal that we would, you know, I think that sort of dawns on people. And it's going to happen the same way in the stadium in the end, you know, when the stadiums when there's just when people see a spade go in the ground at Bramley Moor Dock, they'll get that same feel as that Baines goal. They go, oh, we haven't got long left with Goodison. And that's way Baines felt when he scored that goal. They go, even if he signs for another year, Baines, this like sort of fan favourite, iconic people's champion, if you will, of players. Is he is, like, he is the Jimmy White of <laughs> football, isn't he? Yeah, he's not got long. He's not got long left, and he's he's went went out on his own terms. He's he's retired with a contract still on the table. And how many top Everton players have declined before they've finally gone? And it's, you know, it's not soured their the time here, but they've not gone out on the on a on a positive note. They've gone out on a sort of melancholic note. Baines hasn't done that. Baines has gone out, at, uh, you know, on his own terms. And I already miss some quality player, quality Evertonian. Yeah, it's it's a real travesty to lose a player to this caliber. I mean, he's definitely he's there's a lot of debate. Is he the greatest Everton left back ever? I don't know. I mean, it's definitely the best Everton left back I've seen. But I I obviously didn't see the teams of the eighties. Didn't see you know, um, the ones of Cassidy's teams like you know Wilson and Van den Howe and people like that. I. Yeah, I'd say he's one of them. If if he'd have, if we, this is the, it's a, such a travesty that we didn't win that FA Cup in two thousand and nine when we had the injuries to Jaggy Elke and um, Yakubu and, and Yakubu. The whole spine of the team was out injured. If we'd have won that final, and we we would have no problem calling these players like Kyle, like Tim Howard, like Leighton Baines. We wouldn't have a problem calling them legends. But because we're a big club. Who who have got steeped in trophies, still the fourth most successful English club. We have a hard time calling players who didn't win a trophy legends. But in any other club who aren't as successful as we are historically, he'd just be a legend like that. There'd be no question about it whatsoever. So it's a hard tag to earn without a trophy. But I think if any players deserve it without a trophy, Baines is going to be one of them. Certainly, I think. You talk about players who play for Everton this century and not won anything. Obviously, nobody this century has. He's probably the only one who probably stakes a claim for a place in the greatest ever Everton team. And I think that's testament to how great he's been for us. Yeah, I think it sums up just, you know, just I think because in my eyes, he's, he's an absolute Everton legend. But I think it just sums up how many Everton players in the last kind of, in this kind of Ken Wright era almost have we seen who have been at Everton through the peak of their careers. Like, there's not loads. I mean, I I can't even think of many, to be fair. And especially not just the peak of their careers, but the peak to the extent that they got to it. You know, we always have players on the come up, like Lukaku was, but you know, before he left. You know, we can see players like Tim Cahill, who were probably at, at their peak, but they never hit the, you know, the kind of European, you know, the top European players as Baines has throughout his whole career. But like, and I think that just sets him apart massively from pretty much every player that, that's been around in my lifetime. That I, even now we're not going to have players like him who the the ability that he had would would just you know would just turn down a contract uh, somewhere else to, to stay at Everton because even now, obviously we've got the money to spend. But even if, as, as we saw with Lukaku, we we could afford to pay him you know, what he wanted to, you know, earn at Manchester United or whatever, but he still left anyway. I, I don't think we'll see a player like Baines for a very long time. Uh, one, one of my favourite players ever. And I think it comes to be an Everton legend. And it summed up just kind of his attitude. He just kind of strolled onto the pitch during the drinks break, made that brilliant challenge against Callum Wilson. And then there was no, like, you know, no, no like, faff on at the end of the game, gave it a thumbs up to whoever was still in the stands, just walked off. But, like, and just, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always glad from the tapping like that because, it's clearly exactly how he wanted it, especially from Coleman's interview when he said it's how he wanted it, you know, just kind of stroll in, stroll back out, you know. That, that's just the player he was. He is, he's definitely, think, that, he's definitely that kind of player, isn't he, where he's like the guy at the birthday party who just doesn't want anyone to bring a cake out for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, I think yeah. He's, just, he's just such a such a brilliant player and he was for so long. And and as Terry said, he's, he's still probably getting to a lot of teams in the Premier League, that's the, that's the thing, especially with the experience. And I hope he stays on some role. I hope, because Coleman's mentioned uh, in that interview that he's done today or yesterday, whenever it was, about 
six years ago he wouldn't see him as a coach, but now seeing him how he is, maybe he would be a coach. I can't say it. I, I hope he stays in some sort of capacity to deal with youth players, as, as I mentioned to you a lot, in some sort of kind of loan development role. Because obviously when players go out on loan, obviously we've struggled with the loan system massively, let's be honest. We've only kind of had like Gibson go out, Broadhead go out recently very much. And if they're not getting the constant kind of communication from people like Brands, people like Unsworth, you know, who have other jobs, uh, other, you know, responsibilities that they have to fulfil, their development might not be the same. If you have a presence like Baines, who it's not his job to sort out the loans, but when, you know, when you've got young players out, if they can come back to him as kind of like a point of, point of call, some sort of liaise, I think it would I think it would work massively. And I think he'll have a massive influence if he stays at the club over the youth coming through because of just his, his absolute experience, but also the, the ability that he has. But if he doesn't want to stay, I mean, I don't blame him. He doesn't seem like the character that would want to hang around. He probably just wants to, you know, just go on with the rest of his life. Like, you know, the, like this never happened, you know, join some sort of indie band, go down to the pub, go to some Everton games. I, I wouldn't put it past him, but... He's just striking really, that, type of, that type of player. He's yeah, but I really hope he does stay. Could ever imagine, any. I hope they find just like a Baines role at the club. That's not your stereotypical coach, but just a... An absolute level, the Leighton Baines could just find himself. He doesn't even have to turn up every day. Could come and play his guitar for the for the lads in the under twenty three. That's why he'll be playing the guitar in the fan zone before kick off. <laughs> <laughs> that would that would be remarkable to be fair. But sadly, I, I don't think I could ever see that happening. I wouldn't nah. be surprised, you know, if he just hangs around Finch Farm now, just playing his guitar, talking to Coleman, you know. Oh my God, that's, what he's, gonna, likes, that's really. what he's gonna do. He's gonna be like our equivalent of Jamie Webster and do all them stupid boss nights with a guitar. Oh. I hope not. Like I hope he doesn't turn on that equipment. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh God. Oh, but, but just, a, just a brilliant player. Yeah. I think before we finish on this one, we've got to touch on it. Uh, we talked about his greatest, greatest memories of Leighton Baines and all those great goals that he scored, free kicks. My greatest memory is when Leighton Baines ordered an ice cream at Craven Cottage. I think that was that. That's one of those all-time Everton. I mean, it's it, it's it's probably one of the best memories I've got of the last decade of supporting Everton. It's just watching Leighton Baines order a ninety-nine and from some ice cream man outside. If there was ever like an ideal like photo that you'd want if you ran like the out of context Everton accounts or whatever, that would absolutely be the one. You know, Baines just 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 doing what he does. You know, he, he never wanted to be clearly one of the big stars that you see these days everyone wants to be you know the big names I mean you, you, you don't even hear you, have, you don't ever hear about what Leighton Baines does off the pitch really I mean he's got that great thought with Alex Turner I think it was of, of those lads I mean that's like the most you ever seen of Baines is like outside life which is just some of the player he was but that photo and then giving those lads a lift I can't even remember where they were going or what that was for but that, that just summed them up perfectly just, just you know an Everton fan really who was playing for the club yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have to. Uh, be, sorry, Gwen. The pre season game going to Blackburn, that. And um, I remember at the time dying of cringe, going, Oh, couldn't he have picked up like a nice dad and son? He had to pick up the worst lizards ever, go, the naughtiest left back in town. I was like, Oh, and he's he's immediately regretted loping in his car door there with those lads. But it just, it just shows how sound he was. Yeah, he's just, he's just dead cool and he in every way. Yeah, but I'll just have to, before we finish, I'll have to shout out to me, uh, best mate, if he's watching, because he used to be a waiter in the quarter. And uh, late, he was a waiter one day when Leighton Baines came in. And, uh, he, he, wants, he only wanted the dessert, and there was no tables. And he said, and he said no, he can't. You can't sit down. Sorry, you'll have to wait. And he said, uh, no, nah, it's all right. So I'll just eat it in the car. And <laughs> literally, he just... He, he just waited, waited, got his dessert and like just ate it in the front seat of his car and he said he's just the soundest bloke on the planet. Unassuming. Unassuming. I think he, he sums up the Everton fan base very well, if you ask me. I think it, the, the typical humble... I don't know about that. <laughs> which, which part's the fan base? <laughs> well, the, the humility more than anything else. I think he's just so understated and, you know, when you compare it to that lot across the park was definitely understated. Well, yeah, good save. I was going to say, it's not, a, it's not angry enough. No, it's a, it's a good point. I, I'd love to have, be as cool and composed as Leighton Baines, but, you know, I've been watching Everton for too long. 
I was always thinking, like, what like, what Angel turn into one of us after 13 years of watching it. <laughs> I was thinking, like, what I'd do if I ever met, like, Liam Baines in the street. I don't know if I'd, like, act it cool and just, just kind of give him a nod or something like that. I've, I've, I, done I don't exa- know how I'd react. I've, I've seen him once in the street and he's done exactly that and he was eating a Greg's pasty. <sighs> I mean, that, that's yeah, that, isn't that just vintage. <laughs> <laughs> I've um I've met him a couple of times. Um, served him in work and stuff. And I, I when I, I used to work at JD, and I was the manager of a footwear department. And what I was meant to do was manage basically and let the staff like do things. Um, and it was um they'd order like the shoes for people, and then it'd go into a queue, and it'd be on a screen like you see them in, in like, pretty much every JD. Now it'd be like a screen of orders that were coming down. It'd go green when yours was, and when I saw Leighton Baines, I walked over to him and I was just like, I proper abused my position. I went, no, no, no. Leighton Baines doesn't wait in the queue like everyone else. I was like, what do, what do you need, Leighton? And he just went, I need this, this and that for his kids. And I just went into the back because no one could stop me because I was in charge. Got them myself, took them completely out of the queue. I went, just come over to this till. Mate, if, if you're Leighton Baines and you walk into a shop that I'm running, you don't wait in no queue. You go straight to the till. <laughs> the naughtiest left back in town does not wait in, in a queue on my watch. <laughs> Clearly, the naughtiest left back in town doesn't wait to retire either. He, 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 he retires <laughs> when he wants. So that's uh, mm. I, I That was my Leighton Bain story. I crawled right up his ass, but don't care. I mean, I wish I had a Leighton Bain story. Ooh, ooh, to be fair, the thing is, though, I think I think everyone he's he's probably the, when people talk about like Everton icons of our generation, I don't think there's any who come. I mean, maybe Tim Cahill, I think. With the exception of that, I don't think anyone really comes close to Leighton Baines. Yeah. No, definitely. Not. I mean, Tim, Tim Kale, Leighton Baines, you've, you've nailed it there. It's it's them two, isn't it? And you know, as, as a scouser, probably Baines edges it for me just because of the locality and the whole. You know, he's he's, he's got well, I say scouser, he's from Kirby, but we'll brush over that. Eh? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, well. Um, We'll leave it at that and we'll finish on a high note uh, that Leighton Baines is probably the most iconic Everton player of the 21st century and you can't say any better than that really, can you? I mean... Nope. Could make go, me more right. jealous saying that you've met Leighton Baines a few times like that. <laughs> That's absolutely yeah. I mean, I, I, over I, I, here I, I, you I, never see anyone. I've met him a, co- a couple of other times as well, but there was not as much to that. I chatted to him for two minutes and then that was it. Like, But that one was the most interesting because... That time I was I was a manager and abused me power to <laughs> to, uh, yeah. to sort him out. I I never even spoke to him. I just let on to him while he was eating a sausage roll, and I, was, I think that's as that's as good as it will. Uh, that's as good as I ever wanted to get. To be honest, that's <laughs> like the, pe- the the perfect like one off scenario. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, if 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 it doesn't work out for him, he's de- he'll definitely uh, do well as like the face of Greg's or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit harsh, Craig. <laughs> face of Greg's, dear me. I mean, I think I think Ben should be aiming higher as the face of Greg's, to be honest. <laughs> it's typical of his career, that never gets the recognition or the level he deserves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, what what would what would you say is the what what would you say he'd, he'd do with the rest of his life? <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, appetise Greg. Harsh, to be fair. I want to see was... him go to wherever. Tony Hibbert spends his day fishing these days. Just, I, I reckon I'd like to see those two just in that pond. You know that photo of Hibbert holding that massive oh, fish. I wouldn't mind being just going there. How, how good would it be just having like those two like do their own like vlog like this, but just about <laughs> fishing or something? I think it'd be brilliant. I like to think of it as like you know like Lord of the Rings where they all go off at the end to like over the sea or like the Hobbits and Gandalf and all. I like to think all the Everton players who are popular. If you manage to finish at Everton. And not be hated. You go off onto this this mythical lake and just fish for the rest of the game. <laughs> and, to, to, and Tony Hibbert's there. Just, what, just, what, just, what, when you say fish, you just drop them bait for Everton fans. <laughs> Too much, yeah. Anyone who manages to get out without being despised at the end gets to fish forever. Goes to Tony <laughs> Hibbert's fish in paradise. <laughs> you, need, what, you, need a, you need a die a hero or live long enough to become the villain. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Jerry made a name, a children's book based off a, a joke me and Max said, I'm going to make that children's book, Tony Ibbett's um, Afterlife Paradise. Oh, <laughs> that, that, there you go. They'll be clamouring to sign you up for a deal for that one. Honestly, well, that's that's quality, that. Uh, I mean, wherever this lake is, I want to go there and do some fishing anyway. 
Yeah. You've kind of earned it, though, to be fair. You kind of just rock up to Tony Hibbert's Fish and Afterlife Paradise by just, just having this career. You know, you you, you got to earn it first. Yeah. Darlison's well on his way, but there's the thing, you know, he's, he's only young. It depends how he leaves. Yeah, that's a good point. Like I say, you need to die a hero or live long enough to become the villain. <laughs> I think that I think the player reviews can now just can now just come down to whether we think they'll make it to Tony Hibbert's paradise now as as we rate Everton player seasons. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so the numbers will we'll just go go by the air. Uh, Tony Hibbert's fish and seal of approval. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll leave it we'll leave it that anyway, guys. Let us know what you thought of Leighton Baines. Obviously, very positive. Let, let us know. Your best memories of Leighton Baines as well. Drop us a comment below. Give this video a like and also subscribe for more Toffee Blues content. And until next time, we'll see you later.